Good morning. I'm Peter Kovacs. I'm the editor of the Times Picayune and the Advocate, and <clears throat> welcome to our sixth virtual town hall with Lieutenant Governor Nungesser. Um, it's great to have you here. I just thought I'd start by telling people a little bit about um, how we're doing this. Um, we're at the Advocate Building in Baton Rouge. There's only four people in the room. <laughs> we're keeping our distance from each other, so we're trying to do this in a safe way. And what we're going to do is we're going to read questions that you sent in to the lieutenant governor. Um, and uh, as I said, this is the sixth time we've done a virtual town hall. And when um, a about a month ago someone suggested we should uh, get you to come on and talk about the revival of tourism, and I said, well, maybe we should wait until there's actually something open for the <laughs> tourists to go to before we have you on. And so now we're here, and some things are open for tourists to go to. And maybe if you want to start out by sort of giving a 30,000-foot view of what's happening with tourism and, and what's hopefully going to happen. Right. Thank you for having me. Um, you know, we're coming off our fourth record-breaking year in tourism. It's now the fourth biggest industry in Louisiana. 51.3 million people visited little old Louisiana last year mm -hmm. and left behind 1.9 billion in taxes. That's over $1,100 per family that you and I didn't have to pay. So we got a lot of ground to w make up. In phase one, we can't attract tourists to Louisiana. So we're opened our state parks, our museums, and we're encouraged Louisianans, as we've done for the last several years, to staycation. Go, go see a part of Louisiana you haven't seen I promise you won't be disappointed. Share it with your friends and family, and that'll help us drive Louisianans to support the local businesses doing this first phase. And then in phase two, we're going to open our welcome centers and welcome tourists back to Louisiana. Oh, okay. Why can't we have tourists from out of state come in here now? Under the guidelines set up by the president and the governor, mm -hmm. uh, and they're different in every state. Okay. Um, I was on a conference call, video conference with the governor, and the president and vice president yesterday, and each of the governors talk about their phasing in. Mm -hmm. So it's different in every state, but under the guidelines that the Resilience Commission and all those subcommittees recommended to the governor mm -hmm. uh, in phase one, it doesn't. Uh, as a matter of fact, we canceled all the reservations of out of state people at state parks mm -hmm. to make more room for Louisiana residents through this phase one. But it's just what's in there. Uh, Phase two in two or three weeks will allow us to welcome tourists. Okay. Well, the first question comes from Leo in Central, um, and he says, how do I get a free night at a state park? I reserved four nights, thinking I would only have to pay for three, but the park charged me for four. Well, get in touch with my office, and we'll, we'll refund you that. You, where it says promo co uh, code, you got to punch in welcome back. And that activates you to get the fourth night, either the beginning or end of your stay. So that's a, a little land yap we're offering to Louisiana residents. Um, okay. Just out of curiosity, since I've, I've asked this of other people, when you say call my office, like, are there people in your office, or do, do, the, are, do they work from home and answer your calls? We, or how does that work? We have a third of my staff is, comes in. Okay. We feel so many calls about everything. My office never tells anyone no. Whether it's help getting someone moved closer to a family member in a prison or whether it's somebody with their taxes. So we've got a staff there every day live answering the phone all through this uh, because we thought it was important. To, so they're scattered out, but we do have somebody answering the phone. Oh, okay. And your office is in Baton Rouge? Or in yes. Baton Rouge? Okay. It's in Baton Rouge. Okay. Uh, Wendy from Opelousas says, when will Chico State Park open? The park is closest to my home and I enjoy fishing, hiking, and camping. We're hoping to hear back from the governor's people today or tomorrow. That's one of three state parks that the governor took where they're quarantined people that they believe uh, may, may be positive for the virus but have nowhere to go. Homeless, some migrant farm workers, uh, or maybe you just can't go home to your family. So we've been using three of the state parks. We've asked them to section off a portion of the park where they're keeping those people in campers so we can get the rest of the park back open. Um, we did get the um, boat launch open at Bayou Signet, and we're working on Chico. We should have an answer back today or tomorrow. We hope to get it, uh, sections back open for this weekend, knowing it's a long Labor Day weekend. So the, the, the quarantined people are like in FEMA trailers in a portion of They're the in park? some of the cabins, but, but the, the, the state brought in 100 trailers, okay. RV trailers. Okay. And after this is over, we'll clean them good, and we'll rent them out at state parks. Okay. But... Um, 
They've put some of those in each of the parks so people could be quarantined uh, through that 14-day period. Okay, well, I, it's a beautiful park. I once took a bunch of Cub Scouts from St. Martin's camping at that, there are 12 kids camping at that park, and I'm pleased to say we went in with 12 kids and we came out with 12 <laughs> kids. So, and that's what that's, I think is a that's successful good. trip. Um, so uh, John of Greenwell Springs says, um, uh, what if ever the state parks, up, when, when if ever will the state parks update their campgrounds to full hookups, including sewer like Mississippi and Alabama? So we've been working on that. I didn't realize we didn't have sewer when I got elected okay. until I started getting people okay. that cared. Okay. So we started, we had money in capital outlay, which was swept each year mm -hmm. to, to get all hookup sewage. Mm -hmm. But knowing that is very unlikely to get capital outlay money. Mm -hmm. We've been, I think we've got 50 at one, 10 at another. Mm -hmm. We have a traveling team doing repairs and maintenance. Mm -hmm. And we've been hooking up, uh, my goal is to get them all hooked up. Um, we've been giving out some small contracts to do it, but I didn't realize that was a big thing, especially the seniors. So we're working on it. Uh, we are identifying on our site which ones have hookups, uh, but we're getting direct sewage because it is a pain in the neck to go dump that sewage. Yeah. You know, I came here, I came to Louisiana from Alabama in the 80s, and people used to, in those days, people thought, well, Alabama has great state parks compared to ours. Is, is that still true? Well, let me tell you, under the last governor, in eight years, I didn't even know this, the governor swept 54 million in eight years from state parks. Then he changed the law to make it okay. When I took office, Jay said, you gotta close at least seven state parks. Good luck picking which seven. That wasn't an option. But thanks to the sheriffs helping us in some of the parks do repairs and maintenance with their crews, we were able to keep them all open. Uh, we haven't gotten back to the funding level. We lost over 120 people. Uh, but we're working hard to get them back, and uh, I travel around to them all the time, um, and we're working on improvements. We've got new bathrooms at several of them. We're working on the sewage, but uh, and the private-public partnership's gonna help us. We got horseback ride in Bogachita, canoe operations, tubing. Uh, we're looking for more partners to build some luxury cabins. The more money we bring in through private-public partnership, the more improvements we can do. Okay, um, what's going on at airports I remember we reported this a month ago you know passenger loads were like five percent and um, like what's has that improved any or what's no going on? brand USA which is the national tourism organization is polling every week okay. um, the reason we're promoting we got the, the legislature to remove my 10 percent in-state cap mm -hmm. to promote Louisiana's to get out mm -hmm. then we're gonna go to a drive market 90 percent of the people say they're reluctant to get on a plane or a cruise ship they're going to feel comfortable this summer driving. So we're going to venture out and we're going to work on that drive market this year to get those people to drive into Louisiana. So uh, it's going to, we don't know how long that's going to be. Uh, there's a lot of talk going on about what airlines are going to do to make you feel safer. Mm -hmm. But that comfort level is not there yet. And we haven't seen it improved week to week since we've been watching those polls by Brand USA. Oh, okay. Well, it's too bad because the one place you can social distance is on an airplane right now. <laughs> be plenty of room. You could have a whole row to yourself. You're right. Or, or, something, or something like that. So, um, do you know, this is, I know this isn't your department, but what is New Orleans doing about paying, I mean, paying the debt on that airport? That's that gonna, must have disrupted that. Well, you know, it, it's disrupted that. It's disrupted a lot of um, the payments of even local governments. So, you know, I know there's another stimulus bill to talk about some payments direct. Uh, I'm sure some of that would be if that passes for airports and, and, and local governments. But uh, just like the hotel motel tax, the money that we're getting for state tourism, we're gonna have to support every local tourism, including New Orleans, because they've lost all their income from the hotel motel tax. So we're gonna have to support those events for the foreseeable future to draw a tourist in on a state level. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's, that, that, yeah, that does, that does make sense. Is, is, are the flights, you know, New Orleans, I know, worked very hard, and Baton Rouge worked very hard to get more direct flights, and New Orleans got a direct flight to England, but I assume all well, of that's gone. Well, we're hoping those will come back. Mm -hmm. The South American flight has been delayed, I think, till yeah. November. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think you're gonna see, um, as the industry comes back, those flights will come back. They were very successful out of New Orleans. We put some state money 
um, behind the, the, the British Airways flight. Right. Yeah. And then we also spent a lot of money overseas promoting to get those planes filled. So we'll do that again, and, and that'll come back. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, one thing that seems like basically you worked very hard to win that. Now you're going to have to work very hard. Start all over. Back. Yeah, starting all over. Um, here's another question. We hear a lot about restaurants and restaurant workers and, and how difficult it is for them. But we don't hear a lot about hotels and hotel work. Yeah, and, and it's all the hospitality industry. You know, I got to tell you, one of the hotel owners, Joe Yeager in New Orleans, mm -hmm. bonused his people so they could still get unemployment and gave them a couple weeks pay when he had to lay off a lot of people. Incredible congestion from, from an owner. Um, you know, it's difficult. I mean, I get calls every day and I just, it breaks my heart not knowing what to tell them, how quickly, when it's going to come back. You know, we rolled out Louisiana Land Yap. We offered any convention or group that's canceled anywhere in the country, if you come to Louisiana, we'll give you free seafood, cooked by a local restaurant or chef, and we'll hire a lo local musician to entertain you. We've won, uh, the Trucking Association was going to Florida, they're going to Lake Charles, we're working on the veterinarians, we're going to Chicago, they're looking at New Orleans. So we've been leaning forward, calling all these groups, trying to entice them to come to Louisiana. If we're successful at getting 20 or 30 of those groups to relocate, uh, we can get the hotels and that industry back a lot quicker the end of this year and early next year, and that's what we hope to do. Like when are those two, those two events you mentioned in Lake Charles and New Orleans? Like what? Lake, Lake Charles is uh, November. Okay. The one in New Orleans, we're looking at the end of February okay. uh, for the veterinarians. Okay. What, um, I, I assume that, you know, uh, if you're the, agency that books conventions in your community, you know, you, you get phone calls and emails canceling conventions, you know, all the time. Are there still scheduled conventions? When, when do conventions, when is the first uncanceled well, convention that okay, you know of? We, and, and what I've tried to do is look at the best case scenario. Okay. Three weeks will be in the phase two. Mm -hmm. Another, I thought two weeks, but the medical people say they need three weeks to really judge whether that curve's still going down. If we're out there acting safely and keep that curve heading south, three weeks for phase two, mm -hmm. three, we can welcome tourists back. Phase two, we're going to open the welcome centers. Okay. Phase three is where we can start holding larger groups. Mm -hmm. And that's where the, con and I ask people, don't cancel anything mm -hmm. until you absolutely have to so we can keep as much stuff booked if we can get through these, sta these steps safely and get things back rolling. So are there still conventions scheduled for like, August and September that there, have not canceled? There are some. Okay. A lot of them canceled because of the flight situations and because they're, they're polling their memberships yeah. and some people just don't feel comfortable traveling yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's going to be a problem even when we have conventions again. The attendance, you know, you know the attendance level. We're going to be giving away, when we open phase two, we're going to be giving away Louisiana Feed Your Soul mask at the welcome centers okay. and at the state parks and the museums. If you come in, and you don't have one, we're going to give you one to ask you to wear it. Okay. Well, that's cool. Um, are you still getting BP money to promote tourism, or did that? It's been 10 years. Maybe it's, that's run out. Actually, mm -hmm. I fought that when I was a parish president. We had to spend the tourism money in 18 months, mm -hmm. and we had, we had two and a half million in placaments. Mm -hmm. We had to waste it, and I tried to get the state at the time. That was part of the reason I ran for lieutenant governor. Mm -hmm. We needed three or four years. They made us spend it. Mm -hmm. The BP money, when I took over, we had spent a lot of that money ways we shouldn't have. We asked BP to extend it, let us promote seafood by buying Louisiana seafood and helping charities and colleges. Northwestern sells out every year with a seafood dinner. We provide Louisiana seafood. That money has run out. We've asked the legislature to give the Seafood Promotion Board some money to continue to promote the health and, and why you don't want to eat imports, why you want to eat Louisiana seafood. Okay. Um, uh, do you believe that we will have Mardi Gras in 2021? And, and what did you think? This is a question lots of people ask in various forms. What did you think of Mayor Cantrell's comments? Well, look, the mayor is very passionate. And, 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 you know, I think everybody needs to work pull in the same direction. My recommendation is don't cancel anything or talk about the future unless it's in a positive way. And we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I think we got bigger problems in this country if we can't hold Mardi Gras next year. Mm -hmm. if, if, it's, if it's that bad, we can't hold Mardi Gras, there's a lot of things that aren't gonna happen, and, and this economy is gonna be 
a lot worse off. Mm -hmm. So, and remember, Mardi Gras for the last four years, we promoted all over Louisiana. Shreveport saw a double digit in, 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 in uh, increase in out of town guests staying. Family friendly, affordable Mardi Gras. It has been a great success all over the state. So it's not just New Orleans. So we're still counting on a great Mardi Gras season. And, uh, and if we do have a relapse and things are shut in, we'll deal with it at that time. But we want to project the positive image of everything good going forward and make sure we're doing things in a safe way so we can keep that curve heading south. Okay. Um, what is the impact on tourism if they decide that they're going to have uh, sports, mostly football, without fans in the stadium? It, there again, that fills hotels. People come in from all over for a Saints game in LSU. Yeah. You know, the hotels are sold out on this weekend. The restaurants. Um, I'm cautiously optimistic that we're going to see fans in the stands. Um, you might see the NFL, and this is just hearsay, but they may cancel uh, uh, preseason, take the bye week out, push it back, go right from the last playoff game to the Super Bowl, and get a later start if we don't see this thing improve greatly. But I suggest you'll have to wear a mask, but I suggest we will. That's just my, my take. I think we will see football this year, uh, and the people that don't want to go, those elderly, or they'll just have to sell their tickets or give them to someone else. Yeah. But I, I can't see us not having it. You can't see us not having football? You can't see us not having fans? I, I can't see us not having football without the fans. Okay. And I can't see them canceling football. But if we do have a relapse uh, and we don't do our job and operate safely, we will. And so I'm cautiously optimistic we can get there safely. Okay. Do you have a view and are you involved in the dispute between the New Orleans Convention Center and tourism workers about the you know, enormous reserves the Convention Center has and the view that they should share the wealth? You know, I get that a lot mm -hmm. as well as some of the reserves of the CBVs around the, the, the state. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of those CBVs are operating out of those reserves now to stay afloat. So where they had these reserves for years and people, why aren't you spending it? Yeah. Now we know why. We never thought we'd deal with this. Um, I hadn't been involved in it. Mm -hmm. You know, I try to work with everybody in a collective way. Because, listen, we've got to be able to discuss our differences. But at the end of the day, we're one Louisiana. And if we're all not pulling in the same direction uh, to promote and bring it back. Look, I'm president of the Lieutenant Governor's Association. Every Friday we have a call. Louisiana is posed to, to bring back tourism. We way ahead of every other state. Um, we, we got more assets. We've been leaning forward on attracting people for the future now. But the one thing we can't do is have some inner fighting uh, and not see us all pulling in, in the same direction uh, to pull us out of this horrible time. Because remember, you know, we came back pretty quick after Katrina, the oil spill, the 2016 floods. Uh, in Louisiana, because that's what we do. We, we get out there and work and make it happen. But this is every state in the country is going to be fighting for those tourism, from those tourists. We've got to be on the same page, and hopefully I can help bring those, those parties together to, to do the right thing and make sure we're doing everything we can to promote Louisiana. Okay. Do you know what, um, I mean, it seems like New Orleans has something in common with Las Vegas and Orlando because they're very tourism dependent. Do you know what's going on in those communities? Well, I know in my conference calls of what's going, they're trying to get back open. Mm -hmm. You know, I may, I asked the, the team, uh, the governor's team, to please consider, seriously consider the casinos in phase one in some capacity. Mm -hmm. um, please, because I knew Mississippi was going to open this week. And had Mississippi opened and we didn't open the casinos, a lot of Louisianans would go over there, spend a couple weeks, and spent a lot of money over there that we could use here in Louisiana. So I was so glad that the governor and his team opened phase one, all with the exception of New Orleans. But look, the, the casino people know what they're doing and, and putting these, these shields in and spacing out and cleaning, they don't want anybody getting sick in a casino either. So they're gonna make it as safe as they possibly can, as every restaurant and every shop is gonna do uh, and do our part. So it was very important to get those 
casinos open, so everybody that wanted to gamble didn't just fl flee to, to Mississippi. Yeah. What was the issue? There was an issue with 25% of the machines versus 50% of the machines. Yeah, a lot of people, and, and some of them may choose not to open. Mm -hmm. 25 didn't want them bringing back all the people yeah. um, for that. And so I, I think we're going to go to 50% in, in phase two, which is three weeks away, if we do it safely, and then we'll get to full. Uh, but I, I was so glad to see that. So at least if you want to gamble, go to a Louisiana casino and go out and eat and, and do it safely and support Louisiana. Are, are we real? We in Mississippi reopening casinos ahead of presumably New Jersey, but are we ahead of other states? In yes, a okay. lot of them that haven't done it. So I think you know we're right there with Mississippi and some of the other states. So I think it absolutely helps us. It definitely is going to help Lake Charles address uh, 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 those people that come from Texas and Shreveport, uh, where we get a lot of business across the state line from Texas. It's going to help both of those Louisiana cities because uh, they come there, they gamble. And they go out and eat and spend money in those communities. Okay. Um, one thing you hear a lot about from uh, from a lot of different uh, with a lot of different questions is: um, Are we allowed to hold youth baseball tournaments? And presumably, there's some tourism dollars in that. Absolutely. Um, there's baseball going on this weekend. Uh, you can't have more than ten kids in a dugout at one time. They got to sit apart, and um, and they're taking all those precautions. Um, so yes, those those. Uh, uh, sports are going on now and hopefully you know we had the dizzy dean world series up in ruston we're already reaching out to all the uh, olympic trials we had uh, olympic trials volleyball for women in shreveport last year so we've already reached out to all of them looking to rebook them to come back but the youth baseball is going on now okay so that is an allowed activity because it's yes. outdoors and baseball you're pretty and they got a good set of rules they're doing it safely yeah okay all right i didn't know that um, uh, another group of questions that comes from lots of people is um, how are we going to, you know, get tourists to wear masks? You know, you see a lot of people going to Florida not wearing masks. And, you, you know, know I, I went out to eat this weekend and, and I had my mask on and politely, you know, y'all need to get a mask. If, if you don't have one, I can send you one to kind of nicely. Um, you do it for other people, respect for other people. That's why we came up with the idea we're going to have, give them out at the museums, state parks, and the rest areas. When people come into the state, when we open in phase two, we're going to tell them a little bit how we operate and safely in Louisiana. Please keep your distance, wear your mask, wash your hands, and, um, and try to give them a little quick uh, crash course on operating safely because we want to make sure the tourists come in here and, op and operate safely as well. So uh, you got to kind of friendly, uh, try to embarrass them into doing the right thing. Okay, speaking of museums, what's the status of opening of museums? So we opened all the museums okay. uh, Saturday when, when, because we have, you know, the ones in New Orleans, okay. and that's when the mayor opened up. Okay. So they're all open, got some great new exhibits, okay. and we're wiping down things. Our people are wearing masks as a plastic. So we encourage everyone to get out to the museums. Okay. Um, we had a 35% increase last year in attendance at all of our museums statewide on an average. So we've had an incredible year. Um, and it's a shame that we got a set back here, but um, the museum's in the best shape they've ever been in. Okay. People probably don't know which ones are your museums versus which ones are the locally run or owned museums. Well, and that's why we're doing a study now, and we're going to make a recommendation to the legend. I'm actually going to give up control of the director of the museums. Mm -hmm. The last two lieutenant governors took it away. Mm -hmm. The museum boards ought to be able to hire their own director to make people giving money feel comfortable it's run the right way. But first, we're looking at the best way to run them. We're going to have a board in New Orleans, one in Baton Rouge and one in Shreveport. We're going to ask the Secretary of State to put his museums in. Then we're going to have a grant program to help local museums that are having trouble staying afloat. And we're going to market it on a statewide level, all the museums. Because as you know, the Secretary of State gave a lot of them back to local government with no money. So they're, they're beautiful museums, they just, there's, there's no organization. So we're, we were gonna be in the legislature this year with that bill, because of this, we've pushed it back. But um, the Cabildo, the Presbyterian, the 1850 House, Madame John Legacy in the Quarter, Sports Hall of Fame, the Baton Rouge Museum here, uh, nine of them, you can go to the uh, travel.com and uh, louisianatravel.com, 
click on the museum, it brings you to all of them. Yeah. What about the other, I saw World War II says it's opening this weekend. Uh, yeah. What about the museums that aren't part of your agency? Well, okay. some of them are open locally. Yeah. Some of them have not yet opened. And uh, we're going to try to get a list of all the local ones and post it on our site just to help them get the word out. Yeah. Okay. You gonna? Is that something you're going to do this week? They're working on it now. Okay. They're calling several of them to see and okay. trying to share that information. Mm -hmm. um, and we're asking everyone uh, throughout the week, if you've got an event mm -hmm. that's being hosted, uh, there's they're going to be a quilt convention on the North Shore in, in August. Mm -hmm. Uh, 60 women that make quilts. Quilt well, we're going to need quilts in August. <laughs> here, you know? So we're going to push that out to everybody in a six-state area mm -hmm. that is interested in making quilts. Okay. So we're going to help promote all those local events to help bring as many people, even the small events, to those smaller communities around Louisiana. Okay. One of the things that's going on and is employers are complaining that the jobless benefits are so high that folks don't want to work. Like it's it, you make more money being unemployed. Um, are tourism employers having that problem? Well, I think a lot of the tourism uh, hotel or restaurants have not gone back to work. But I have heard with the restaurants that open up, some of the people are not wanting to go back to work. Mm -hmm. I think they're making the equivalent of $21 an hour with the unemployment benefits. Yeah. But I believe the way it, it, it's supposed to work is if you're offered your job to go back to work, you got to go back to work or you're supposed to lose those benefits. So I don't know how that's working out. I don't know how that's calculated or reported, but that has been a problem. And, it, and, and it's been in, in a lot of the discussions, if they extend those benefits in a new package, mm -hmm. uh, how do they do it in a way to the people that can go back to work, go back to work? Yeah, I think the governor, when I visited with him, said that if someone refuses to come back to work, the employer goes on a website and fills out a form. But I think there was some view that maybe employers weren't necessarily going to be choose to do, do that, that or be that tough with people who they know who work for them. And yeah. so that's a complication. Yeah, nobody wants to deny them that money. Yeah, yeah, and everyone else is getting the money. Why can't they get the money? But you do hear employers saying that, you know, it's like we're ready to open up, but we can't get people to come back. Well, I, I told somebody the other day, if they don't go back to work, there's somebody I'm sure waiting to take that job. Yeah, well, in this environment, uh, when are rest areas going to open, including restrooms? So we left the restrooms open at all the rest areas, except where the DOTD owns the ground. On I-55, they closed it so nobody can pull in there. That's a DOTD decision. We run the building. Hmm. We have left the bathrooms open at all of them, and we clean them several times a day because we know people traveling. That's the first place they can stop to use the restroom. We will open all the welcome centers in phase two, which will be three weeks, um, and, and we'll do it safely and, and, and be giving out masks and welcoming visitors back in phase two. Okay. So they're not open for the most part now except the bathroom part. Right. Okay. Um, well, here's one uh, from Ed in Covington says, what can you do about idiots who refuse to wear masks in hotel lobbies? You know, we're asking, and I'm on a conference call with restaurants, hotels, attractions, bed and breakfast, and I encourage all of them to, to make their employees cause lead by example and then very nicely suggest um, and provide some masks for, to give to people, and, and you can very nicely ask them to wear it. You can't make anybody. The governor's not going to make anybody, but... Um, like I try to do, I'll try to nicely embarrass you into doing it for everybody's sake. Because listen, nobody wants to go back to home isolation. I don't like wearing this thing either. But if I don't wear it, I'm setting a bad example. And if we all don't practice all the things recommended by the health officials, and we got to go back to home isolation, how many more businesses are going to fail? I don't think we can take that hiccup. Mm -hmm. So we've got to do this responsibly. Yeah. Um George from Independence says, do you realize that people are coming to Louisiana from states that are less locked down and therefore they're going to make us sick? That's why I got a lot of calls about when I closed the state parks. Mm -hmm. And I closed the state parks because local elected officials called me and said there's people in my park from Kentucky 
they're eating in the local, they're going out in the community, and my seniors are worried. So we closed every state park, kicked everybody out uh, because of the feedback from local communities. That's why in phase one, we, we canceled all the out-of-state reservations. They're only open to Louisiana residents. That's why we didn't open the welcome centers. And in phase two, when we welcome visitors back, we'll do this, we'll do the hand sanitizer, we'll try to train them and coach them to operate safely in Louisiana. But you know that was the fear up until this point, where reason we've kept as best we could. Okay. But you can't stop people from driving in here. Yeah, no, I'm aware of that. Texas tried. I yes, I don't think they had. I don't think it worked exactly. No, they <laughs> um, uh, you know, there are restaurant owners who are saying that they can't make a go of it at 25 percent or even 50 percent, and of course, a business. You know, I mean, most businesses aren't built to have their volume cut in half. They're, their loan, their staffing, the size of their building, the air conditioning, everything else is just not rooted. In I agree. Yeah. Um, we made the push, uh, the restaurant industry did for 50%. Um, the Resilience Commission and, and, and the medical personnel, uh, the decision was made by the governor's team at 25. We accepted it moving forward in three weeks. A lot of people, you're right have opted not to open it to 25 and are planning for uh, either getting back to full occupancy or 50% in phase two um, and, and, and set their sights on opening when we get to phase two. Yeah. So Andrew from Baton Rouge asks, when will film production sector, when will that reopen? Well, that's gonna be, you know, we, we did a, a study when they were gonna get rid of the tax credits mm -hmm. to show that 9% of everyone that comes to Louisiana is heavily influenced by a TV show or a movie. That's worth over $1.3 billion to Louisiana every year. So when, when they were trying to get rid of the tax credits, that helped show the value, not only to the movie industry, but to the tourism. Uh, we started the Louisiana Film Trail, Lights, Camera, Louisiana. People wanna go where movies were shot and where people were shot, like Bonnie and Clyde right here in Louisiana. It has a tremendous impact. Um, unfortunately, those decisions are gonna be made by Hollywood and the people shooting the movies. I suspect you may see some small production in phase two and then full fledged when we get to phase three. So in, in time, three, 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 nine weeks, um, I'm hoping it'll be back. Yeah, we're still one of the criticisms, there are a lot of criticisms of the movie subsidies, as you know. Um, but one of the criticisms of them is that they get that subsidy whether it's obvious that the movie was shot. If they make a movie about Louisiana, maybe it's going to lure tourism. But if they take the subsidy and they make a movie in Louisiana that doesn't say it's about Louisiana, they get the same subsidy. We, we, we had long conversations about that. And if we go back and tweak the bill at some point, two things. We'd like them to have to superimpose on the side of the bridge, Baton Rouge, yeah. water tank, mm -hmm. identify the town and city in some way, and also we want them to leave behind something from that movie that one day we can put in a movie museum. Mm -hmm. We got so much history. The first Tarzan movie was filmed here in Morgan City 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. We just celebrated 25 years of Steel Magnolia. Mm -hmm. That put Natchitoches on the map. So we've got so much history here. We want to capture that uh, and make sure we promote it. Okay. Um, Tracy from Lafayette <clears throat> says, wouldn't a modern and efficient interstate system provide a much more appealing invitation to businesses, residents, and tourists? You know what? We've got to fix the bridge problem. Uh, the three lane here in Baton Rouge is being done. You know, the president talked about a major infrastructure package. Maybe s some good can come out of this um, horrible virus that we have. Uh, if we do see that kind of federal spending in that, maybe we can get the funds we need to build that new bridge. You know, I believe we ought to call a state of emergency and fast track it and not take five to 10 years to build a bridge and build it in sections because you're absolutely right. It's not only hurting tourism and commerce, but if you're looking to locate here in Louisiana and you look at that traffic every day, time is money. So I'd like to see us fast track uh, if we get the opportunity to get some of this federal money that they're talking about in a stimulus package. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, having, you know, having an event without an audience like might work for something like football, 
but it's not going to work for cultural events. You're not going to have a symphony without. So what are the prospects for all of that? Well, you know, if we get to phase two, mm -hmm. and, and you can have groups of 50, mm -hmm. um, which, and I'm just, um, I'm, I'm guessing at that, yeah. okay. and then phase three with a group of 100 or 200, uh, we can get back to some of those small events that we have throughout Louisiana and, and the small venues for entertainment and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic we can get there uh, in this non-week three phase one, three phase two, okay. three phase three, and get okay. get our doors back open. What's in? I'm not even. I don't even. I haven't even looked at what's in phase three. Then. Well, phase three, and once again, I don't want to put words in the in the governor's team's mouth because okay. there's a lot of changes back and forth. But I su suspect phase three is going to open like a wedding, mm -hmm. or or something in a ballroom at a hotel. Um, there will still be some restrictions. But you'll be able to host some of those, I'll call them medium-sized events. And then from there, you'll end up with the outdoor fairs and festivals that we've seen a lot of them cancel, but many of them push back to October. Yeah. So what is, what's still on for October? Well, I know the Peach Fest is, is scheduling to be in October up in Ruston. Uh, several other ones have not picked a date because it's getting kind of crowded on the calendar yeah. later in the year, and they want to have a date where they're not competing with something in a nearby town. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of talk about, I know the Peach has scheduled, got a date scheduled okay. in October, but I don't have dates on the other ones yet. Okay. Are there any in uh, Baton Rouge or New Orleans or Lafayette? Yeah. Um, I haven't seen none that booked a date. There's a lot of talk about, and if some of them have canceled, about substituting something on some of those weekends to bring tourists in. Oh, okay. Um, do you have a view of the New Orleans policy that um, made restaurants take reservations, which is not the, you know, yeah. different from the statewide? Yeah, I don't, I, I really don't, I, I, I don't see how you do and track that. Mm -hmm. um, if I don't, I'll go in and what are you going to ask for my driver's license? You just take my word I'm putting it. Yeah. So I understand why they're trying to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't see how that's a really workable system. Uh, and, uh, and I hope it doesn't deter people from going out to eat. Because those restaurants that open surely need the business. And, uh, um, and, and I tell you, I'm, I'm real proud of the industry and the way they've reacted to making well, throwaway menus, uh, washing things down, wiping things down. And I watched the staff at Chimes out in Covington this weekend where me and my wife at. And those people are working extra hard to make those for established safe for people. And I'm real proud of that. Yeah. I mean, one thing I thought is, if you pay with a credit card, they know who you are anyhow. So, and most people pay with a credit well, card. Well, and, so. and, and, and if you go there and leave, mm -hmm. and let's say one of the workers comes down, so you're gonna try to reach everybody in that restaurant, and everybody, in other words, those, those people are wearing this in the restaurants, mm -hmm. so you ought to be pretty, I, I, I just don't see that. If you've got a mechanism to track it, but I don't see how you go back and, you know, that waiter was there five days, you're gonna get everybody that went there for five days and try to track where they are. I just think it's almost an impossible task. Yeah. Um, this is um, from Travis and Metairie. Um, what, do you, what are you gonna do about restaurants that are reopening and are not following the guidelines? You know, set forth about like the tables are too close yeah. and the workers aren't wearing You know, I. What I've been told is people are reporting those to the local government, and then it's up to the local mayor, whether she has the, the sheriff's office or, or sends somebody out to correct them or advise them. Uh, it's enforceable on a local level. And uh, we haven't received any of those complaints, but if they've got complaints, they need to bring it to the local elected officials uh, to go in and police that. Okay. Um, what's going on? Can folks tour the state capitol? Um, they are let, you know, they're in session right now. Okay. People are in there testifying. Every third seat in the, in the conference rooms are marked off. Okay. So, uh, yeah, the state capitol is open. So people can go in there and tour it. They're, you're required to wear a mask. There's a sign on the door. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we're looking forward to uh, getting back opened up and working, you know, one industry that we're going to be able to really promote and grow mm -hmm. is a riverboat cruise. 
Yeah. People can feel a lot safer getting on those before the big cruise ships. Yeah. And knowing that we're trying to add docks in Baton Rouge and other areas up the river, that's going to be a real opportunity to grow tourism all over the state. And so we're looking forward to a day when we can have night tours of the state capitol, downtown Baton Rouge, and have another thing to do at night for those visitors in downtown Baton Rouge. Okay. Um, a few people asked, I mean, people have asked different questions about the we. We had the women's basketball final four that got canceled. I, how does that work? Do they give you your money back? Do they give you the 2027 version of it? Or what happens with big stuff like that? And, and, and the Sports Foundation in New Orleans, we've reached out to assist them in any way we can financially or whatever to rebook those facilities. I know he's working hard, uh, Jay Cicero, yeah. does an incredible job. Yeah. I know he's working hard to all of those sports to rebook them. You know, they book four or five years out. Right. So I'm sure we'll get right back in that rotation as soon as we yeah. can. But yeah, those are things that uh, really hit us hard. Yeah. Do you know what happens with the money? I assume you subsidize, like the state subsidizes. Well, I'm sure yeah. the yeah. monies that we plan to spend, because mm -hmm. it got canceled, Tom, yeah. other than deposits they might have made, but I don't know the particulars of that. Okay. I don't think it really cost us any money at that point. I'm not totally sure of that, but okay. uh, Jay would be able to tell you that. Okay. Um, Vic of Slidell asks, um, is, says tourism industry workers are at high risk for COVID-19, but they have limited financial resources. And so, like, what's protecting them? If they, you know, they serve people all day and one person gets them sick. There, there's been a lot of talk about that is how do we, First off, the best way to protect them. And secondly, a lot of those people live paycheck to paycheck, um, making sure that they're made whole if they do go out sick. And I don't have a good answer for them, but I know that's something that's being discussed both by the health officials and the governor's team, uh, because you're gonna see it. Um, we, we, we're gonna do our very best to protect the workers and protect the people out in public, but you're going to have somebody. Uh, we just hope to keep it a minimum. Yeah. Um, so Dan asks, um, why can't bars serve food? Um, it seems like if you could, op if you can open a bar that serves food, what's the difference between a bar that doesn't serve food? Yeah, um, that's been brought up a lot in these conference calls, and um, the requirement set out in Phase One mm -hmm. is that you have to have a, a license. Uh, you got to have a kitchen. You got to get that inspected. Yeah. So we're, you know, we're in the phase one. I'm pushing real hard to open bars in phase two to some limit because the, those people have to pay rent just like everybody else. Those bartenders need their jobs. So we're hoping, you know, I, I, we, we lost round one in phase one of getting them open with limited people. Um, so I'm hoping we can get them open at. 50% or whatever the, the guidelines set forth by the health officials, but uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that we can get them open in, in the next couple of weeks in phase two. You say you were on conference calls and all that, so you were arguing the side of a, a bar that serves food. It's not all that different from a bar that doesn't serve food. What was the articulation? Well, the argument the is side? after, if, look, I'm a hugger mm -hmm. and I want to hug everybody. And after a few few drinks, it makes it a little harder not to hug. Okay. So that has always been the argument of people drinking and gathering at a bar. And you know, there's been recommendations, put a strip of tape on the bar to keep the distance and only serve, if the bar holds 100, serve 20 at a time. Um, it's very difficult to police. And I think that's why we lost the argument in phase one. Yeah, I see, okay. Um, Armand says that, you know, a waiter or waitress makes two thirteen an hour plus whatever they get out of tips. And so how can you make money when 25% of your restaurant is full? That means 75% isn't tipping. That's why even the food we picked up, me and my wife has been tipping mm -hmm. uh, more than the food bill. Yeah. Um, and I've asked everybody to tip what you can afford, um, you know, it's just, uh, it, I don't have a good answer. It's horrible. I got so many friends that work in that industry that um, just aren't making it. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, 
people are going to, that's why it's so important to do this safely and get, a, get us back as quickly as possible so we can put as many people back to work. But I ask people, even when you're picking up food, put a little tip on that credit card. Uh, I'm tipping more when I'm picking up food than I used to tip in the restaurants just to say thank you to those people that are back to work. And, um, and I know there's a lot of fun set up to help some of those people that lived off of tips, uh, both in musicians and that you can go to those sites and make a donation to help those people. Uh, there's some grant money put out there by United Way. And so uh, for hospital, I mean, for uh, 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 food workers, people working in the industry. And uh, I think you're gonna see more and more of that. We're very giving people in Louisiana when we know it goes to a good cause and uh, we gotta support those people. Um, Jeffrey from Lafayette says, don't you think it's too early to start reopening the state? We have no testing, and regardless of what the president says, Dr. Fauci says it's too early and death and illness will come. Well, the, 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 the governor and his team and the medical team there has seen this curve continue to go down, and, and they believe we're in a good position to continue that curve if we do it safely. Now, once again, the people that are have immune deficiencies, uh, elderly, um, they should wait, a, a, you know, till we get to phase two or three before venturing out. But I don't think we can afford to keep the economy, but we got to do it safely, and I believe we can. I see more people wearing masks now than in the beginning when, when our numbers were through the roof. So we're doing something right, and, and we've got it, we've got to, we've got to do it safely to protect people, but we've got to get this economy back open. Okay. Michael from Metairie um, says, would it work if restaurants hung clear plastic shower curtains around the tables <laughs> and therefore, you know, each would be like isolated? And listen, that's, that's another idea. <coughs> I know in some of the booths they've put some plastic yeah. between them where they didn't have dividers. Feel like you're going to a restaurant to take a shower, but that's a creative <laughs> idea. So, yeah. Well, you could also install a shower, and this way, if you get uh, if you get if you get dirty, you can take a shower. Well, while they're taking there. a shower curtain and put arms in it, yeah. so grandparents can hug their grandkids. Yeah, that would yeah, that would work too. Um, uh, this is the last question for today. Uh, Mildred uh, from New Orleans says. Um, What's going on at the convention center? That right now they've got a hospital there. Um, presumably there's some, eventually they're gonna decide they can close the hospital and make it back into a convention center. Right. Yeah. Um, there were plans to ramp that thing up as we needed it mm -hmm. for overflow from when it looked like the hospital was gonna mac. Um, they stopped that expansion and now I believe that the, the plans are to ratchet it down um, to where we know when we know I, I, they have kept it open in case we do see another spike through this phase one. I don't know exactly what the governor's plans are, but I know they're looking at ratcheting it down at some point, getting that place cleaned up so we're ready to, to when it's time to accept conventions and large groups back there when we can do it safely. What part of it? It can't occupy the whole convention. No, yeah. no, it's in one, it's in Hall D. And, um, and it's pretty impressive mm -hmm. to see what they did in that uh, incredible National Guard. The people that went in there and did that uh, just did an incredible job of setting those pods up quickly. And the doctors and health professionals have done an incredible job. The way they turned that around so quickly was, was something to really see. Well, we appreciate you coming here today to talk about tourism. I mean, it looked like we were doing really well with Listen, tourism until now. I want to thank yeah. the advocate for that nice uh, editorial about tourism. Okay. And um, we're looking forward to, uh, to getting people out to staycation and take a Louisiana road trip. Yeah. So well, we really appreciate it. Okay. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you. Okay.